Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we're talking about the top five baits that consistently catch fish in February. In most of the country, February is a transitional month. And what I mean by that is the beginning of the month is very much winter, the heart of winter. But somewhere towards the end of February, you end up with this transition into the very, very, very beginnings of the pre-spawn. Fish start behaving differently, start making moves into shallower water to feed. It typically happens around the full moon in February. That's usually when those fish begin that shift. So with that in mind, baits that work at the beginning of the month may not continue to work and baits that would not work at all at the beginning of the month might be just crushing by the end. So I'm gonna give you a, a said five, it's actually six. You guys know I always give you something extra. I've got six bait categories for you. Uh, and then I'm gonna give you a couple of baits in each one at least so you have some choices. But these are in no particular order, okay? So coming out of winter, first one up is going to be putting the glide bait back into most people's arsenal. Uh, as fish, I mean, like I already said, it's still winter time. There's no question. It's freezing cold. In some states, the coldest months are behind you. In other states, February is the coldest month. Either way, it's irrelevant because the fish know what's coming. And when that instant transition happens, it is instant. You will go from no fish in the shallow, none whatsoever, to fish everywhere. And it can literally happen overnight or over two nights. Uh, I've had so many times on Clear Lake where we'd be up checking those shallows, nothing, 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 literally blanking, nothing, nothing. Catch one, come back the next day, catch 20, come back the next day, catch 40. Uh, they just start to pour into the shallows to begin that transition into spring. So the glide bait is one of those really, really powerful search baits that you can throw as that transition begins. When you start to feel warmer days, not so warm that you could be out there in a t-shirt by any means, but when you're out there in your jacket and it's sunny and it's mid-afternoon, you take your jacket off to a hoodie and it's chilly, but, but you can do it. And then you start thinking, man, I, I could almost take this hoodie off. Not quite, but almost. That's go time. Pick up a glide bait, pick one of these other options up and go shallow, start searching. A glide bait is great because you can cover a lot of water very quickly and it has huge drawing power. It will literally pull fish to the bait. So if you were finesse fishing, slow fishing, you have to be very methodical and land on those fish in cold water. But a glide, it's got enough movement and enough mass that it's worth their time and the fish will rise to the bait. So one cast may cover a 10 or 12 foot area over and over and over. You can cover water very quickly doing that where you would have to pick it apart with a finesse bait. Now, like all these videos down in the video description, I will link you the exact bait. So this is the S Waver 168. This is a G-Rat Sneaky Pete. These are very specific baits. These are the glide baits that I would trust. The waiver is a little bit smaller. Sneaky is a little bigger. Sneaky is also a little bit louder. So if you've got uh, murkier water, if you've got a lot of cover, I go here because this bait is tighter action and I get really whippy and aggressive and pop it and work it in and around cover. But if I'm covering more expansive flats, larger areas, especially with murkier water, I go to that one, just a one-two punch. Second is going to be a square bill, or I guess these aren't really square bills, but some version of a shallow crankbait. Now, as we come into February, I'm all about flat sides. As we transition out of February, I've transitioned to a normal square bill. But going in, 
That's Ott's Garage Crank, and I crushed them on this last winter as we transitioned into spring. Uh, just a phenomenal bait, tighter actioned, works really, really well in cold water. The other one is this Spro. This guy, this little John, this color specifically, I couldn't even tell you how many pre-spawn fish I've caught on this color. I don't even know, hundreds? Maybe a lot more than that. Uh, I have destroyed them with that bait in that color. These baits notice their profiles, two different sizes, but their profiles are extremely similar. Very similar actions with both of these. It's just a size difference. Both are awesome options as that water just barely begins to warm up at all and they just barely begin to start making that transition. The other one is we get to the end of February. See, the baits will shift. So as we get towards the end of February, I switch to more of that traditional, fatter, rounder bodied square bill. This is a River to Sea Biggie Papa, specifically the cold blooded color. Does that look familiar? I love that clear red in the spring and we'll get a lot more into the red bait thing soon. I mean, reds, oranges, they're already showing up. Uh, but throwing that crankbait will allow you to cover water quickly, similar to a glide. It's even faster. You can be really aggressive, stop and go, pause it around cover. And then you can also stay really weedless, which is key. When these fish move shallow, I do mean shallow. Uh, if you throw in there and you snag up, you can ruin an entire cove when you take a boat in there. So by sticking with baits that are really weedless or that deflect really well off of cover or stay up in the water column, you don't risk snagging up and ruining an area. You can stay way back and make long casts because again, these fish are just pulling into the shallows. They're not afraid to blow right back out of there. These are fish that are moving up. They have not been in the shallows with bass boats for months, right? Last fall, they'd been around boats most of the year, but now in spring, they're just moving up shallow. They're not as used to the boats on top of them. And if you come in on top, they can blow right back out. So be careful, stay back and make long casts into the shallows with baits that can deflect and stay out of that cover. Next one, let's go jerk bait. I love throwing a jerk bait in the spring. My biggest jerk bait fish ever came on that bait right there in the spring. Uh, it was actually in March, if I'm not mistaken, it was the first week of March. It wasn't actually February, but the bite was already up and rocking in February. A jerk bait will work all the way through the cold water months and beyond, right? It's been working all winter long. Uh, you guys know we throw that Vision 110 a lot in the heart of winter, but as soon as we start that transition into the shallows, that's when I add back in all of my really aggressive jerk baits. That's when I want baits that have really loud sound and have tons of flash. Okay, that's where that game comes back. Because again, these fish are moved up to hunt. They are there to feed and to bulk up before the spawn. That's what the pre-spawn is all about. They're transitioning and they're feeding. So baits that will draw them, that will get their attention, that'll get a core response. That's where you want to put your time in. This is a pointer 100. That's the bait that I caught my biggest jerk bait fish ever on. This for the last, I don't know how many years has been my absolute favorite jerk bait for fishing in that shallow when I want that flash. This is the Jackal Rerange. Specifically, it's the 110. So pointer 100, Rerange 110. These baits are amazing. And actually this is, is this the MR? That's the longer lip. I want the shorter lipped guy. I honestly don't know when he's sitting here in my hand, which one he is. I think it's a short lipped one. Either way, I'm gonna link the right one for you down in the video description. One more bait though. So we've got the Pointer 100, the Rerange. This is one that I'm curious about, that I've been playing with, but it didn't exist last spring. So I have not got to go through a pre-spawn with it. But this is Shimano's new World Minnow. And can you see inside there, do you see the flash? So the World Minnow has, they call it flash boost, but there's a suspended piece of 
chrome or metal or something inside there. And even when the bait stays still, it's in there rocking and flashing. And that is really interesting to me because again, I'm all about flash. I like baits that are shining light this time of year. I believe that really pulls fish. I also really believe in secondary action and that is secondary action. But again, I have not got to throw it in the free spawn yet, but that's a bait I'm really excited to play with. Okay, moving on. So we've got glide baits, shallow crankbait, a jerk bait. Next up is the lipless. The lipless, what can't I say about lipless fishing in the spring? It is one of the best ways to catch a giant fish. Whether you're burning it, whether you're hopping it the entire spring, it's incredible. But there's a very specific window that starts in February when those fish first make that transition, the giants come too. So the males go first, the bucks hit the shallows, and then sometimes it's hours later, sometimes it's a couple of days later, the giant females come in behind them to start feeding. When those giant females come in, they tend to hang back a little bit and hopping a lipless on the bottom triggers those fish. It's unbelievable how well it works. The bait that we've done it with for years is the Lucky Craft LV500. The other one that we throw a ton is that Jackal TN70. Those two baits are almost interchangeable for this method of fishing. Back in California on Clear Lake, the LV500 couldn't be touched. Hands down the best option. Out here on the Tennessee River, Jackal TN70, hands down the best option. Both are killers all over the country. But this method is not chucking a wine in. This is throw it out, let the bait hit the bottom, reel up your slack, and then lift. Slow lift, you'll feel it start to vibrate. You get three or four vibrations and stop. The bait will vibrate and pendulum back. Vibrate, pendulum back. That's all you do. They clobber it. It is unbelievable how well it works. It really is a remarkable way to fish. And that bite always, like clockwork, fires off in February. One more addition to that, and this is how we got to six. My fifth choice, which we're actually doing as number six now, was easy. But when I started thinking about the lipless, I can't talk lipless without also talking about a blade bait. A blade bait is traditionally a cold water winter thing. Heart of winter, deep water, you know, small mouth, spotted bass. In recent years, Blade baits have come so far. Now they come in amazing colors with amazing detail. And as a result, they fish basically year round. Uh, their ability to catch fish consistently has branched way out of winter and straight into spring. During this transitional time and all the way into spring, we mix back and forth between a blade and the lipless. If there's a lot of people throwing the lipless, set it down, try a blade because the blade is silent. That's the big difference. See how thin a blade is? It's literally a piece of stamped metal and then it's got weight on it, but it does the same thing. Vibrates up, pendulum down. Vibrate up, pendulum down. The two that we use this is the Mega Bass Dyna Response and this is the Demiki. These two, just like the Jackal and the LV, interchangeable. This one is way more aggressive, a much harder vibration. This one, because of the tail, is a tighter vibration. We have absolutely crushed them on both. We keep both in the boat at all times because you don't know on a given day which one they will eat. If I'm going out on this bite, I'll have a TN70, an LV500, a Jackal, and the Mega Bass all tied on. And I'll go out there and just switch between them until I find the standout. And then I set all the others aside and just go with that one for the day because it really does change day to day. But that blade bait is another killer option and I couldn't skip it. And that's how we got to six. Now, last but not least is the A-Rig. 
Uh, the A-Rig works in the fall, it works in the winter. It crushes them during the transition into the pre-spawn. Absolutely crushes them. Just like a glide or a crank, you're covering water. You can do it quickly. It has large drawing power. I fish bladed most of the time because in most lakes, not all, in most lakes, you're going to have flow in spring. It's going to get murky. Uh, you'll have days where it's murky, days where it's clear, then it rains, it floods, it goes back to murky. It's a mess. So I tend to throw bladed, but if you've got clear water, immediately lose the blades and go to non-bladed. But this is the tactical flex rig. This is our rig that we did with Hog Farmer. It's a six wire rig. And we've talked about this before, but when A-Rigs came out and got popular and we got good at throwing them, there were days when a five wire would completely outshine a seven wire and vice versa. One would be way better than the other. So ultimately we ended up making six wire rigs because it's that perfect storm in between where it just seems to catch them all the time. So three hooked baits, three dummy baits. The dummy baits sit higher and farther forward. The hooked baits sit lower and farther back. They literally never bite these three ever. I never get short strikes on these. If it's set up properly, they always eat the hooked baits. But the A-Rig, cover water, fish it fast, pump that rod, work it aggressively, really aggressively, and you can draw incredible feed responses from fish and sometimes catch them two <laughs> and three at a time. Uh, again, February is transition. It's going to start out cold and slow. Your winter techniques are still applying, but the second you feel that warmth yourself, start searching for fish in the transition. And if you never feel that warmth, wait for that full moon, start searching for it right after that. A lot of times that will get them to start making the move. Even if there's no change in the conditions, they just seem to know it's time to start cycling forward and it just starts happening. Again, down in the video description, I'll link the baits. It's supposed to be five baits. Really, it's six categories and a fair number of baits, but I'll break it down by category, keep it really simple for you, give you our favorite colors for each bait so that you can fish with confidence. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.